Out of respect for our graduates and their distinguished guests, I ask that you please turn off your cell phones, your pagers, and your beepers. The ceremony will last approximately an hour and 15 minutes. In a few minutes, the official ceremony will begin with a formal processional. Our graduating students will enter first, followed by members of the Damon College faculty. Pay attention to the academic regalia, the robes, caps, and hoods. The colors lining the academic hoods, draped across the shoulders, represent the academic field of study and the academic institution where each professor's degree was received. Academic regalia often reflect unique institutional styles. Following the faculty is the platform party, officials who will be seated on the stage. The leader of the platform party will enter, bearing the ceremonial college mace. In medieval times, the mace was carried to protect the person of dignity. Once the platform party is seated on the stage, the ceremony will be called into session. Thank you for joining us today and enjoy the ceremony.
<coughs> as Vice President of the Faculty Senate, I hereby declare the 70th Annual Commencement Ceremony of Damon College in session. On behalf of the faculty, I would like to offer my congratulations to our graduates, their families, and their friends. The faculty have truly enjoyed working with you during your time at Damon, and we wish you every success in the future. I now ask that everyone please stand for the Canadian National Anthem. Oh, Canada, our home and native land, true patriot love, in all of us command. With glowing hearts we see thee rise, the true north strong and free. From far and wide, O Canada, we stand on God for thee. God keep our land glorious and free. O Canada, we stand on God for thee. O Canada, we stand on God for thee. Please remain standing for the American National Anthem, which is being performed today by Sarah Rodman, class of 2013. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there Oh, said us that star-spangled banner yet wave O'er the land of the free And the home of the brave Thank you. Please, everyone, be seated. I would now like to introduce the chair of the board of trustees, John Yurchik. Well, this is certainly nice to see you all in person. Uh, on behalf of the board of trustees, I welcome you, the graduates of 2021, your family and friends. Students of Damon and the reasons the trustees meet, deliberate and act, as graduating students, your own reward. Your legacy began the day you walked in, onto the campus of Damon College. You have persevered, you have triumphed, you are forever members of a great family and the Damon College family. The college is very proud of you and all that you've accomplished. On behalf of the trustees, thank you for a job well done. Okay. It gives me great pleasure to introduce the president of Damon College, Dr. Gary A. Olson. Honored guests, graduates, and friends and relatives of the graduating class of 2021, welcome. We're gathered today to honor our graduates for their achievements at Damon College. This commencement ceremony is rooted in rich tradition and symbolism. The awarding of academic degrees dates back to the 12th century. The mace as a symbol of institutional authority is a tradition from the 13th century. 
and the medallion and chain of the presidential office originated in the Middle Ages as a symbol of self-governance and academic freedom. Today, we carry on that centuries-old tradition, and I'm delighted to be able to do so in person after what has been a long year of distance and separation. Graduates, you belong to a very special class of citizens. Only one quarter of the people of our nation earn a college degree. In other words, three quarters of our citizens do not go on to earn a college degree as you have. You've earned a high distinction, and you're part of an educated elite. And while you've demonstrated mastery of your academic area of study, perhaps the most important ability you've acquired is a habit of mind, the ability to think critically about the world. This is an ability that will help you make wise choices for the rest of your lives. And this ability may well be the greatest asset that you take away with you when you leave here today. Now more than ever, educated citizens are being challenged to reaffirm, champion, and put to good use the values and skills we all share as educated citizens. Our collective future depends on a populace of critical thinkers. It depends, in part, on you. As college-educated citizens, you have a heavy responsibility, and it all starts today. Now, graduates, you're members of a very special college, and I feel confident that no matter what challenges you experience in your life, you will continue to meet those challenges with wisdom and integrity. Graduates, I congratulate you and wish you well as you go forth to experience greater challenges than you have yet faced. And don't forget the skills you've developed here as you become the successful individuals I'm certain you will become. Certainly don't forget your, your professors, and by all means do not forget Damon College. You are now and forever part of the Damon community. We hope to hear from you often over the years to come. And I'm certain that you will continue to make Damon proud that you are one of our graduates. Graduates, go out and do good in the world. Congratulations to you all. Thank you, Dr. Olson. My name is Tracy Murphy, and I am the Director of Athletics here at Damon. It is my distinct pleasure to congratulate all of you on such a remarkable achievement, as well as to introduce our commencement speaker. Mark A. Emmert became the fifth president of the National Collegiate Athletic Association in October 2010. During his tenure, Emmert has championed greater support and opportunity for student athletes in all divisions and sports. This includes our own student athletes here at Damon, whom Embert conducted a town hall meeting with in 2017. In addition to delivering an address as part of Damon's Distinguished Leaders Lecture Series. Before leading the NCAA, Embert was president of his alma mater, the University of Washington. Under his leadership, the university rose to second among all public and private institutions in research funding. Emmert previously served in many higher education capacities. He has been chancellor at Louisiana State University and provost and chancellor at the University of Connecticut and has held various ad academic administrative positions at Montana State Bo University Bozeman and the University of Colorado. Emmert graduated from Washington with a degree in political science and has both a master's degree and a PhD in public administration from Syracuse University. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present the commencement address from Mark A. Emmert. Thank you very much, Tracy, for the kind introduction. I, I appreciate it greatly. And, and, and first of all, uh, thank you to President Olson to the Damon Board of Trustees, to all the parents and family members that are gathered for this wonderful event, and most importantly, to all of you, the new alumni of Damon College, congratulations. Congratulations on getting to this point in your careers. Congratulations on reaching this milestone of, of a, a graduation ceremony, albeit a very unusual one, but in the midst of a, a global pandemic, it's it's remarkable to simply be here and being able to have this event today. 
Uh, you know, I'm, I'm really terribly sorry that I can't be with you in person. I, I love being on campuses. As you heard from my introduction, I spent most of my life on campuses. I love being on campuses. I love interacting with students. It's one of the things that, that I look forward to every year when I get to go out onto campuses around the country in my new job with the NCAA. I spend as much time as I can meeting with student athletes and, and getting to hear what's on their minds and answering questions and asking questions across to all over America. And, and one of the things that's most intriguing to me is that often as we're having a Q&A with students, um, somebody sooner or later says, you know, how did you become president of the NCAA? I, that seems like a cool job. What, what do you have to do to become president of the NCAA? Uh, and, and after I've answered that question a number of times over the past years, it's caused me to actually think about, you know, myself and kind of how I got into this position. And what does that really tell me about uh, advice and thoughts that I have for, for others and young people in particular? And it, it's, it's fascinating for me because, you know, the fact is there's, there's really nothing in my personal background when you look at me where I was at the same time of life as where you are today, uh, that suggested I was gonna be president of my alma mater, the University of Washington, or that I would wind up president of the NCAA. Uh, on the face of it, you know, you, you'd say, well, you know, how did this, this young kid wind up in that place? Because I grew up in a working class community, very, very few members of my of my community, my neighborhoods went to college. It was a pretty rare occurrence, frankly. Grew up in the 60s when there was a lot of turmoil going on, a lot like today, by the way. Lots of anxiety and concerns about how the world was gonna turn out. Didn't really know many uh, college educated people other than my teachers and my doctors. And uh, that was kind of kind of it. But I found my way to a great university and and worked my way up through it and wound up uh, becoming a professor and then lo and behold, an administrator and finally a university president and then got a chance to do this. And so that, that progression wasn't quite as natural as it might appear. But when I reflect on my earliest learnings, all of a sudden you realize that, yeah, actually it did prepare you perfectly for these opportunities that were laid in front of me and are being laid in front of you. And, and that is that, you know, the success in life wasn't wasn't there because I grew up in a household where everybody had a PhD or, you know, where everybody had great resources or anything else. I, I grew up in a community that was in many ways really, really a fortunate place to grow up. Um, you know, I learned the core values that I think you all have been learning here at Damon. And I suspect whether you're reflecting on them now or not are going to serve you extremely well. And I thought about this, about three core principles and values that were inculcated in me as a young person, as an adolescent, and as a college student that really, really work um, for everyone. And, and, and the first one of those, I, I just call grit. It's just determination. It's just learning that there's a lot of things you have to do in life that, that just are hard work. And, and sometimes some of the most important things you have to do is just lower your shoulder and push. Uh, that you want to, you know, follow your passions. You've been you've been taught that all your life. You know, find the thing you're passionate about, and you'll never work a day in your life. I, I don't subscribe completely <laughs> completely to that principle. Uh, you should follow your passions. You should do the things you love. You should be passionate about big important issues in life. But at the same time, you have to recognize that following that passion sometimes it's just hard. You you've got to be persistent. You've got to dig through, you know, setbacks. You've got, what I, one of the things I love about athletics, being passionate about sport, also means you got to get up off the grass, get up off the mat, and just lower your shoulder and push again and start all over again. That being passionate isn't easy. Sometimes it's hard. And that grit, that determination makes all the difference in the world. And I was lucky enough to have 
people around me all my life who, who taught me that, who, who said, yeah, 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 you, you fell down. Now you get up, now you start again. Now you get back after it. And you can be successful in life in a lot of ways just by sheer grit. You know, the second thing that, that I was imbued with, and I, I'm sure you've picked it up at, here at, at Damon as well, is just optimism. You know, I, I listen to all the social media today and, and all the so-called pundits that are out there. And I gotta tell you, there's a lot of naysayers out there. I, I swear that Twitter was invented just to make us all feel bad <laughs> about what's going on in the world. You know, I've I've read all the statistics. Oh, this current generation, they're not going to have it as well off as their parents. And, you know, all of that that's that's swirling around out there about all the problems in the world today. And let's not kid ourselves. There's a lot of big issues and big problems in the world. And my generation is not exactly turning a perfect planet over to you uh, to, to work with. And for that, I'm sorry. But you know what? No generation ever had a perfect planet turned over to them. And and if you approach your life and your career by assuming that you're not going to have it as well as anybody else did, you're probably going to be right because you're not being optimistic. You're not being positive about what you can do and what you can't do. And, and I have to encourage you to think long and hard about all the opportunities that are in front of you and realize that, yep, there's big challenges, huge challenges, but you've got to figure out how to work your way around them and 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 get past those obstacles and challenges and get to where you know you can be and, and be clear that you can do the things that you want to achieve and, and manage those things in your lives with a good bit of optimism. Uh, I know that in my own life when People suggested to me that I should become a professor. I didn't even know what a professor did for a living, but it sounded so intriguing. And there were all these huge obstacles in front of me and, and my colleagues, but I had people all around me saying, yeah, 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 but you can do that. Don't don't, don't worry that nobody's ever done that you, that you know of. Just, you can go forward and, and achieve that. You can work your way past these roadblocks and you've got people around you that'll do the same thing for you, that'll support you in that effort. And, and if you've got an optimistic perspective on life and you know you can achieve things and you've got that grit to go along with it, you you will do things that today seem very, very far away and maybe even out of reach, but they're not. They really, really aren't. Because along with that, that grit and that optimism, the third thing that I picked up in life that I would strongly encourage all of you today to think about is the need for trust. The other thing that I worry about today is that social media and the broader media in general, it it makes us tend to think that the world's out to get us, that that everybody's distrustful, that you can't you know place your faith in anybody or any institution or anything today. And I think that is just wrong. I think the vast majority of human beings on earth and if you think about it, your, your classmates and friends that are with you today, you know, socially distanced or otherwise, the people that have been around you through your experience so far in life, they are people that are worthy of your trust and they have reflected it in life. And, and that is an important, critical lesson and value for you. If you give trust to people, if you trust them, 99% of the time, they will return that trust. If you support them, 99% of the time, they'll support you. If if we as a, as a collective people, if we reach out to folks and, and create those kinds of bonds of trust and support, they are returned in kind. If we look at people askance and say, oh, I don't know, I don't think I can trust that person. I don't think I can support that person. That's a risk involved there. Odds are it's not going to be it's going to be reciprocated in kind. They're not going to trust you. They're not going to support you. It takes an act of faith to reach out and trust people. It takes an act of faith to reach out and support people. Sometimes they will not be trustworthy. Sometimes they will not be worthy of your support, but the vast majority of times they will. 
and they will return it to you. We need in our society that kind of trust. We need it in our friendships. We need it in our families and our communities. It's that core level of trust and support that makes our society work. And it allows you as an individual to be successful. Those three things I learned in a little working class farming town between Seattle and Tacoma, Washington, a little town where people didn't aspire typically to, to grow up in the public school system and wind up running the University of Washington or the NCAA. But grit and optimism and trust, along with that community, and that community personified those three values. When I look back and say, that's what got me there. That's what allowed me to be successful and many, many other people around me. It's hardly unique to me. There's, there's nothing special about me or where I grew up except for those three key values. And I would urge all of you to take what you've learned in college, all the academic lessons, all of the intelligence that, that you've gained, all of the things that you've learned here at Damon College and integrate into those, those three values that I promise when you reflect on it, you've picked up or you wouldn't be here sitting here today at this commencement exercise. And, I, and you will have great success. I was talking to my wife about this and I was walking through this talk the other day and thinking through what I wanted to say. And she said, oh my gosh, do you realize you've got a great acronym? And I said, what do you mean? And she said, grit, optimism, and, and trust. Got, G-O-T. She said, just say to yourself, I got this. And I thought, wow, I, I think that's pretty handy. So, so you, you know, you can remind yourself easily by just saying, I got this. And lean on those three values that you learned from your family, from your friends, from your community, and from this wonderful college. And I think you'll find yourself in good stead just by reflecting on those three things. We need them badly in society right now. We're yearning for them today in society. And you can in fact exemplify those along with your great college degree and you're gonna be successful in life. So thank you very, very much for being a, allowing me to be a part of this ceremony. Uh, I've been on your campus before. I love the campus. I so wish I was there with you and, and you were there together as one. I know the great memories you have from your experiences there. Uh, and, and, and it's gonna serve you very, very well in life. Congratulations to all of you. What a well-earned moment in your lives. And President Olson and members of the board, thank you so much for allowing me to be a part of this ceremony. I now have the pleasure of introducing Senior Vice President of Academic Affairs and Dean of the College, Dr. Michael Brogan, who will present the candidates for degrees and President Olson, who will confer them. President Olson and esteemed faculty, I have the honor of presenting the candidates hereafter to be named who, having completed the requirements, are eligible for baccalaureate degrees. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the trustees of Damon College in the state of New York, I welcome to the company of scholars the candidates hereafter to, uh, named and confer upon them baccalaureate degrees. In the interest of time, may I ask the audience to hold their applause until all the candidates have been presented. Bachelor of Arts, English, Bertilla Keithia Kovo, Kovi, Cum Laude, Aaliyah Naomi Angela Abraham, History and Political Science, Derek A. Mancuso, Summa Cum Laude,
Ariana Danielle Dreyer Kumare Kamara Q Mohammed Lindsay Grace Horneb Magnum Kumare Liberal Studies Samantha Ray Miller Francesca M. Satana Calicia De Sombre Melissa Edith Kelly Summa Cum Laude Mathematics Jordan Michelle Vasquez Magnum Cum Laude Bachelor of Fine Arts Julia Noel Kurpevich Summa Cum Laude Valerie R. D'Agostino, Magnum Cum Laude. Aaron Kathleen Riley. Arden Gray Goodmundinson. Jose Williamson III. Alyssa A. Rice, Magna Cum Laude. Jamel I. Clark. William James Doyle, Jr. Brandon Tyler Woodhead, summa cum laude. Andrea Lynn Unra, magna cum laude. Jared Michael Lee. Catherine Leesing, magna cum laude. Kyle David Payne, magna cum laude. Jessica Ann Oaks, cum laude. Bachelor of Science, Education, Georgia Diane Wicker, summa cum laude. Olivia Rose O'Neill, cum laude. Carly M. Hardick. Elizabeth Smith Willett, summa cum laude. Jonathan M. Schmidt, magna cum laude. Nursing, Susan Ann Miller. Katharina Reinhardt, magna cum laude. Kayla Christine Stauffenberger, Samuel E. James, Jr., magna cum laude. Tracy Lynn Swan, summa cum laude. Nancy Petromo Petromica. Amirza D. Erse. Summa cum laude. Caitlin Sue Tempus, cum laude. Kathy Sue Plowinski, summa cum laude. Elizabeth Pearl Bogardis. 
Brittany Lynn Bobek, summa cum laude. Shannon Guest Wick, summa cum laude. Cassie, Cassie Renee Vogel, summa cum laude. Selena Ray Alvarado, summa cum laude. Irina Varian, summa cum laude. Jessica Marie Rizu, summa cum laude. Nicole Wiktorowski, magna cum laude. Remy Elise Navi, summa cum laude. Alyssa Zappia. Heather Lynn Powers, summa cum laude. Maria Elizabeth Pimple. Jerlene Andre. Tara Charday Henry, summa cum laude. Sarah R. Whedon, summa cum laude. Penny Marie Bianzano, summa cum laude. Terry Ann Macklin, summa cum laude. Francesca Gabriel McCool, magna cum laude. Visual and Performing Arts. Brianne Nightingale, summa cum laude. Michaela McCroon, cum laude. It is now time for the turning of the tassel ceremony. Standard protocol in the United States dictates that candidates for undergraduate degrees wear their tassels on the right side of their motorboards at commencement. Then, during the turning of the tassel ceremony, all candidates move their tassels in unison to the left side of their motorboards, signifying that they are now college graduates. Will all the candidates for degrees Please rise. Ladies and gentlemen, please move your tassels to the left side of your motorboards. You are now college graduates. Congratulations, job well done. Please take your seats. <laughs> I would now like to introduce a short video that will serve as the official induction into the Damon College Alumni Association. Congratulations, class of 2021. You did it. As your alumni director and fellow graduate, I'm proud of all you've been able to accomplish during your time at Damon College. Now that you are officially alumni of Damon, I am so proud to welcome you into the Alumni Association. Members of the National Alumni Board will tell you the amazing opportunities that await you now that you're Damon alumni. 
The tight-knit community of Damon College doesn't end with graduation. As you begin the next chapter of life, this is just the beginning. We are proud to have you join the over 18,000 graduates that make up our Damon alumni community. The Alumni Association can provide you with ways to stay connected, explore free resources, and continue lifelong learning. As a part of the Alumni Association, you have access to a number of benefits and services. This includes retaining your Damon.edu email address, with access to the full Google Suite. The ability to request a transcript at any time and audit courses to continue your academic exploration and self-enrichment. The Career Services team offers free and unlimited support for you. As you begin the next chapter of your journey, they can help up your professional game. With interview prep, tools for an effective salary negotiation, and career mentorship. And don't forget to follow us on social media. We'll keep you connected with your classmates, help you promote your own content, offer small business spotlights for our alumni entrepreneurs, and connect you with the full network of the Damon alumni family around the globe. We want our Damon alumni communications to reach you. Don't forget to send us your updates about work and life. From landing our dream job to walking down the aisle. You always have a home here, forever, Damon. Until we meet again, congratulations. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, in a few minutes, I will declare this ceremony officially conducted. Please remain in your seats until the platform party and the graduates have left the room. Diplomas for May graduates will be distributed by the Registrar's Office in early June. Please check the Registrar's website and watch for your diploma pickup emails for the exact date. Any diplomas that are not picked up by mid-July will be mailed to the graduates. As Vice President of the Faculty Senate, I hereby declare that the 70th Undergraduate Commencement Ceremony of Damon College has concluded.